So Bake Kujira. We're going to start with his kit, then we'll go to a build, and then we'll go to some tips and tricks and just ideas with his kit. Starting with the build, I saw a lot of you in my first Bake video saying Arrow did less damage than the tank starters, which for one is wrong. And you type like you're correct. Ready? One auto. 35. One auto. 31. Does not do more damage. Yes, it might be better for some 1v1s, but that wasn't your comment now, was it? Gilded is more damage. That's why I did Gilded in my first video. That's what you get. The build that I was doing that I still think feels really good, uh, Gilded into... Not Berserkers, Phalanx, Shoguns, and I'll tell you why, kind of why some of these items. Into, just for counter building currently in the meta, Spectral, Pestilence, and then like Spirit's Robe. This is like something that I'd run, and then hit 20, upgrade to Diamond Arrow. See if you can live with the Diamond Arrow. If you can't live with the Diamond Arrow, if you're dying too quickly, sell it for Gem, E-Staff, whatever else. A defense item if you feel like you're going to be doing a lot. He really doesn't need power items because his... His kit translates so well with magical and physical defense. So like e even something like binding, I think would be a fine last item. But diamond arrow does give a lot of damage to your autos. 153. If I sell this for a binding, it is 117. So you're dropping 36 damage just like that. So diamond arrow does do a lot more damage, but it, it is trading out your survivability by a little bit. But that's the build I've been running for the leveling order. I've done it a couple ways. I've done one where I max two first. I've done one where I max one first. I think the one max feels a little bit better. The value of putting points into your two is the damage goes up and the damage reduction goes up. But if you consider 12% to 20% and 6% to 10%, it's really not that much difference when you compare it to the protections you get from this and then also the max stacks. Protections, uh, like if you get up to 10 max stacks, you're getting 60 protections as opposed to just 12 at the level one. So I think putting points into your one feels a lot better. Like that. You get, you get protections up very fast. So how I like to level is level one, I like going my one. Level two, usually I like to get my dash. If I know the enemy mid laners in mid, I'll maybe put a point into two in some matchups, but I think getting your three is better than getting a point in your two because it's a very good trading tool. It slows the enemy. One, alt, one, one, two, one. I think I do not like maxing the alt a lot of times. The damage increase is nice. The basic attack damage is nice and the cooldown is nice, but I think getting points into the two when you actually rotate to those fights feels a lot better, but I wouldn't fault you for maxing the alt and I'm still feeling it out, but this is what I would do just right now. And then I think it's one more point in the alt, max out the three and then another point in the alt. That's what I would be doing. So that's build and leveling. Now let's take a look at the kit. So the passive is Bakke gets no attack speed from items. His attack speed is stagnant from level one to 20 at 1.25. I would not be too surprised if they make it 1.05 and scale by 0.1 per level and doesn't scale by items or something like that. Or if they just outright reduced the attack speed that he has at the uh, early portion. So that's the first part of the passive. The second part of the passive is attack speed gives you haste. With 30% attack speed, I am moving at a reduced, space, a reduced pace, but I'm still moving rather fast. If I get another attack speed item, throw this in. I have less slows when I'm auto attacking. So at 50 stacks, you will no longer have that haste penalty when you're autoing. So here I slow a tiny bit. See, I catch him when I'm not, but when I auto, I slow just a tiny bit. I like going phalanx because a lot of the times you're getting hit by auto, so your attack speed is going to go up anyway. And I think it's just an outright better item than Berserkers. And the last part of Bakke's passive is he curses enemies that hard crowd control him. And we'll find out where curses are in a second ability. The one which we've already partially seen is he gets bigger auto attack range. So this is his current range. When you pop the one, Goes out to there. So that's what the one does. Also, it gives you protections on auto attacks. So if I pop my one and I auto, I'll get six stacks, six stacks, six stacks. And you get all the way up to 60 stacks if you can get it all the way. Well, maybe I can do it with these ones. Yeah, because this will give me double autos. So it gets you all the way up to 60 stacks. One stack per enemy. And that is essentially the one. The two is a cone ability. And you can kind of whip it. It's a little awkward. So if the guy like jukes you, you can kind of flick it to him. It's not like an instant ability where it just goes where you're standing. Wherever you're fl flicking when it has like a small cast time, that's where it will go. And this curses enemies. And by cursing enemies, you're reducing their damage by 10%. And if you hit them again with the two after they're already cursed, you'll double the curse. So instead of 10%, it'll be 20% and it will get this little circle above their head. On top of that, it is also a slow, 15% for two seconds. And the last little combo is if you use your two, your one reduces the damage 
and it's by 0.1 seconds for a minion and one second for a god. Next up, the dash. It's a little circle around you, which is a knockaway. And then a dash in this straight line. So this is a knockaway and this is a push. But if you can line it up a little bit on the side, I missed. You suck. Can line it up a little on the side and you'll still push them forward. And then at the end, it's a little bit of a stun. And that's really all this ability is. And lastly, the alt, this giant circle. So this one is a little complicated. The area in this slows the enemies and time dilates them like Ola Run Alt. Inside of it, Bakke does extra bonus auto attack damage and the nearby enemies take extra damage. So both of those on top of each other. And the enemy debuff isn't instant. So it's not just instantly they'll be slowed by, I think it's, is it 50% it gets up to? 40%. It starts at 10% and it slowly stacks up. So it's not just instantly 40%. They have to be sitting in it for a little bit. Be a pretty easy chase down potential after that. But it's a really good fighting tool to, to kind of where do you I want to fight? I want to fight when my ult is ready. The only thing that's a little weird about the ult is there's no CC immunity. So you have to keep that in mind. So a couple tips and tricks. When you are fighting in the wave, a really easy way to do it is to just group the wave up and then use your one. An awkward thing with... Bake is his auto attacks push back the minions. So I'm going to sell all this and go back to level one. So you can see me actually struggle to clear the wave. If you see me walk in and I try to walk into the middle of this, I knock the minions away. So a really easy thing to do because knocking back minions stops their auto damage. You want to hit the enemy god to group the wave around you and then keep hitting the enemy god in the wave. You want to fight in the wave with this character because you won't take damage because you're knocking back the minions and they will take damage because they're going to be fighting you in the wave. And if they're not hitting you, then you're just damaging them as you're clearing the wave. So just in theory, you'll be out trading them and you'll also be out clearing the wave. And then if you want to just group the wave because you just want to fast clear but by because for some reason, maybe the enemy solo leader is not there. You already solo killed him. You can just dash to group the wave and then that gets a little bit closer. You can actually just auto clear it down. Bakke's clear is incredible. You never have to worry about that. He's a very good early game dominant character. Kind of think about him in the same vein as Yorm in laning phase where... 90% of the time, you're not getting out 1v1, but some gods maybe outpoke you if they have range. Like I said, very simple god. The last little thing is if you're playing him in solo lane, he's not blink reliant, but he's got a pretty good combo with blink. So if you just blink and then push them into your, your one, they'll actually just take a ton of damage because your three stuns them. And if you know the enemy has beads, obviously you don't want to blink and just instantly three because then they'll just beads it and you'll kind of be out of position. So all you have to do is just kind of blink to get on top of them. And then you just alt, wait out their dash. And then as soon as they use their dash, you dash after them. Because you have a lot of chase potential. Because think in your kit. The most important thing about Bakke's kit is his auto attacks. So when you get 50% haste from your attack speed, you can stick on gods permanently. And you can kind of mess around with them, interrupt their abilities and stuff reduce their damage, and you want to make sure you're spamming your two. You're going to feel like you're using it a lot, but you have to. Your two is like your most important ability when it comes to late game fights because you're reducing their damage, you're doing damage to them and slowing them, and then you're also just setting up for the rest of your abilities. But yeah, like I said, Bakke is a very simple character. If you guys have any questions, anything about the builds, any items you're curious about, let me know. Drop them down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. See you guys again next time. Peace.